Uh, Silo started 10 years ago on the other side of the planet with a guy named Joost Bakker. He's a Dutch-born Aussie dude uh, that I lovingly refer to as the zero waste prophet. He's a bit of a genius. And uh, he's recently started a project called the Future Food System, um, which is a house, a self-sufficient house that grows food, more so a, uh, a temple of zero waste. Uh, the house is inhabited by Matt and Joe, two incredible chefs and very dear friends of mine. And um, we did a live stream recently with them to, to catch up and to hear more about this insane project. Um, just a warning, if you're going to watch this, it might blow your mind. It blew my mind. It is the best version of the future that I could wish to, uh, wish to see and that I could imagine. So uh, I hope you enjoy and there is a full live stream on our YouTube channel. I would love to have a tour. I, I can't be there in person, which breaks my heart, um, but I would love to have a tour. Best place to start is at the, what I call the heart of the building. Um, it's or the stomach. This is a mushroom. Oh, this is kind of the entrance really, which is like kind of like the garage. It's got everything. It's got the, it's where the energy is made. It's where the energy is stored. It's where the inverters are. It's where um, there's, there's a battery storage. And so we're collecting solar power during the day and then using it at night. What I love about this concept that you're looking at right here is that every single household in Australia produces enough waste to fill this wall. So every single hot water service produces a condensate and every single shower produces steam. So we're harvesting those elements to create the perfect environment. And then what's inside the buckets is actually, that's, a hot, that's a, the hot water unit that produces the steam, uh, the condensate. And then every single bucket is filled with things like um, fibrous cellulose waste, so coffee grounds, corn stalks, cardboard, a newspaper. And so that volume, that size is actually quite um, significant because I've designed it so that it can actually utilize the waste that every household already generates. So there's an aquaponic system there. We're using the water from the aquaponic systems to feed the vertical gardens. We believe that where we generate food waste is where we should be producing fish because that food waste can be turned into fish food. And then that fish food becomes, of course, nutrients for all the plants that we've got. So we've got bananas and different other things, strawberries and that sort of thing growing up there. The barramundi here are an Australian native fish. And one of the, one of the breeds in there is actually golden barramundi, which is super rare. And they've got a really white flesh. Barramundi are the world's fastest aquaponic species. We've got lots of favorites in the house. You know, obviously the mushroom wall, the aquaponic system. This is crickets. So again, I'm hoping that by 2030, every single house has a, a cricket farm. They're the perfect pet. Not only that, they eat all the food that we don't want. Yeah, so what they do is they lay their eggs in the, in the black soil. And as long as that soil stays moist, they'll lay eggs in there and they'll reproduce. And then all you've got to make sure that you do is that every fortnight you change I mean, you should probably could do it weekly as well. You take that air carton out, you put it in an incubator because the crickets will actually eat themselves. So you've just got to make sure you... Yes, how does the population of crickets kind of stay in like an equilibrium? How do they not overpopulate? Uh, because you keep eating them? Yeah, we... we, we oh, just nice. There we go. <laughs> That's brilliant. And so... What's Matt you know, cooking, Matt, Matt and Joe? Uh, so we've made a garum, a cricket garum. And then on Saturday night, actually, Joe harvested the crickets at 5 p.m. and we had guests at 7 p.m. And the difference, like they were yeah. so fresh and they were just, people were just going, going oh my God, these are amazing. This is the second aquaponic system. So, so we've got two systems. We've got one on the ground floor and one on the top floor. This has got crustaceans, shellfish, mu mussels. So this is our favorite part of the house. So we dream that in it, like every house in the world should have one of these because you would never, ever need to go and buy herbs or lettuce or greens. Plus the greens are so much more 
loaded with nutrients and tastier because the fish are providing the nutrients. And the trout have grown from, you know, the size of your thumb to about 15 centimetres in three or four months. Yeah, it's so they grow so quick. What is the tank? Sorry, I can't quite see what it is. They're IBCs. They're used for transporting liquid all over the world. You could buy them in London for nothing. There's some oats. So Joe's holding up some oats that um, have actually just grown by themselves, to be honest. Mate, we've bloody rolled some oats for this guy in our time, haven't we? <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, like, oats sounds like such a, um, a crop that you'd imagine growing in a huge field and loads and loads of it. Like a bowl of porridge is a lot of oats. How can such a small... Do you just have to shift your approach to cooking an oat? You know, do you do yeah. it differently? Do you serve it younger, fresher? How does that change? Well, we grew, our, one of the first crops we harvested was a, f a couple of bins of oats. And it's actually, like, if it were just Joe and I here, it still would have been enough. I like to think of uh, zero waste as just a system with no loose ends. We often say, Doug would love this or Doug would love that. It's like you're in this house, but you're not, you know, you're miles away. But anyway, it's, <laughs> I think this is like a house for Doug. You would love it. All right, mate. Thank you so much for tonight. And Today, this morning. Good on you, mate. Good on you for tireless, tirelessly working so hard to do what you do. And, you know, we, you get it, we get it. It's not easy to do this. You know, it's much easier to conform with the system. Um, and I'm sure we could be equally as successful in, in cookery and in the restaurant world. But um, to do stuff the way we are, it's not easy. And we, we, we know that and we love and respect everything that you do. Thank you. It's like the path of most resistance, you know. Uh, <laughs> humans like things, uh, convenience, and um, we choose the path of least resistance. But to do the things uh, that we're, we're, all, we're, we're all doing um, is definitely the path of most resistance. But, uh, yeah, from that is um, a, a hopefully a better-looking future. <laughs>